Have you thought of breaking through? Ain't it part of what you do? Catch a victim while he's dumb. Break his larynx with your well, time. 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 It's time to get high. Well, this ain't no goddamn dream. It's exactly what it seems. And welcome back, boys and girls, for another special edition of the Michael Deacon Program. Thanks for being here, boys and girls. We have a bit of a rattlesnake on our hands, as I love to say. Joining me in a moment, prepare yourselves for this one, is Mr. Michael Horn. Michael has 44 years of experience as a science researcher and began his study into the UFO contacts of Billy Meyer. In 1986, Michael found previously unknown warnings originally published by Billy Meyer about unnatural man-made climate change, global warming, the increased frequency and intensity of storms, blizzards, tsunamis, and the coming climate destruction. The list goes on and on and on. Now, without further ado, let's bring in Michael Horn. In the building right now, live and direct for you this evening, is Mr. Michael Horn. Michael, how on earth are you, my friend? Well, remarkably not overheated in a state where there's a lot of overheat. Thanks for asking. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you are alive and kicking and not dying of the heat like most people out here in California are. And uh, Mr. Horn, you know, I've taken some time to reflect on this program. And on our friendship here, you know, I've been doing this show with you for such a long time and (laughs) i recall listening to you way back in the day back in it must have been 2004 when you were on with art bell correct amundo yeah that that was the the early days it's almost 20 years ago oh my god yeah i know i feel it too who 20 years 20 years it's gone by in a flash right uh seemingly so although at other points in our lives we feel that the things that we thought, you know, the years that passed by may have been a little more agonizing in some detail while we were going through them. Right. But, uh, you know, so also the the beauty of the human memory is that it can be selective and Mm -hmm. repressive at times when it serves us to be so. So, yes, Mm -hmm. indeed, Michael DeCon, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah, I just hopefully we keep extending it, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no problem, no problem. It's just, um, I was thinking about it and I thought, my God, Mr. Horn, you've been sort of going at it left and right for the longest time about the Billy Meyer contacts. And so many people out there find you highly controversial. (laughs) Well... Yeah. Well, the first thing, though, speaking of controversy, you, you really should call. I know our names are the same, but you, you call me Michael or whatever you want. I, I when, You know, when I hear Mr. Horn, yeah. I, I always think about what I <laughs> required my mother and my father and my daughter to call me. But no. Uh, yeah. Just no know, worries. It'll just make me feel a little older than I am if I hear Mr. Horn. I appreciate it, though. It's, it's, more- it's just I, I'm so lost right now, Mr. Horn. Uh, so I, and I see I did it again. It's out of habit. It's out of habit. So once again, thank you for joining us and taking the time to share your insights with us in these uh, very strange and certain times. And I feel a little disoriented. I don't even know what uh, timeline I'm living in right now. I mean, we have a sort of ongoing Tupac investigation and the presence of UAPs or UFOs and the unsettling nuclear arms race that has the potential to sort of escalate into a global conflict, basically a World War III scenario. So I, I, I have no idea what's going on, Mr. Horn. Well, I tell you, uh, everything you've mentioned, of course, uh, we can address as specifically fulfilling long foretold prophecies and predictions from Mr. Billy Meyer, who those people who know his name mainly know of him in terms of his UFO case, the singularly authentic contacts that this 86-year-old Swiss man has been having since the age of five with space traveling and time traveling extraterrestrial human beings. But uh, what most people don't know is that the the core of this case addresses the always unasked question in the so-called UFO or gag me UAP conversation. And that question is, 
if contacts are real with extraterrestrials, as they are singularly in this case, what's the reason for them? And the reason for them, I like to answer because it is so, is to help us, humankind of Earth, assure our very threatened future survival. The way that these people, the human beings that Meyer has met with for all these decades, have gone about it, and people can argue with it or not, but they chose to present this man uh, in, let's say, starting in 1964 and continuing to about 1981 with the most clear photos, films, and video of UFOs that actually exist to this day, predominantly daytime, but also including nighttime images. These photos were independently analyzed and authenticated by photographic, filmmaking, special effects experts, astronauts, national security people. And yet, if we are to pay attention to the scam that the U.S. government continues mm. to perpetuate, yes. this, this case doesn't even exist. And uh, it, it, it's worse than that in many ways. So that must bother you severely. It did very much for a right. long time because my self-determined mission, if you will, once I realized back in 1986 that this was not just about great UFO evidence, but it was about our future survival and how these people were going about trying to awaken us. Right. I decided I would try to make the prophecies wrong because the, the step up above the higher standard of proof is the pr prophetically accurate, mm, let's say, uh, scientific, environmental, geopolitical, medical, and economic information that this person, Billy Meyer, has been publishing since he was a nine-year-old boy. And we have charted well over 250 specific error-free examples of this highly detailed information, incomparable, unparalleled, unequaled, whatever you want to call it. Nostradamus is the equivalent of somebody throwing darts at a board in terms of the kind of unambiguous, clear, prophetically accurate information that only Meyer has published. And it's not a celebrity thing. This has been a mission, actually, that dates back something like 13,500 years, ostensibly, according to the information in this case, with these people's ancestors, these extraterrestrials who we often have heard the term Ple Pleiadian, but that's the screen name that these people, the Playaran people, gave Meyer to use beginning in 1975. So... I consider that I failed at my mission. I was going to prove the prophecies wrong, meaning that by unrelentingly going out and publishing this information, making presentations internationally, lecturing in universities, making five documentaries, countless videos, having a blog with 2,000 articles, that I would be able to reach enough people who not only, you know, many, many people from around the world find it, but I would reach out to scientists and media people, both so-called mainstream legacy, if you will, or, or alternative. I would reach out to journalists and all sorts of people that supposedly were interested in the truth about things. I found out that it's anything but the case. Most people, the majority of human beings, including all the aforementioned, are not interested in knowing the truth, which is, <laughs> in a way, I don't blame them. It's a very harsh reality that we've been presenting to people so that that reality would not fulfill. We failed at that mission. I did in terms of my role. And even the people who meet with Meyer have said, strangely enough, that they have to retreat from here. They go back to their own worlds. And the way they put it in the blunt terms was, the people of Earth, the mass consciousness of the people of Earth, well, they're simply too 
stupid, and uninterested in and incapable of thinking for themselves. They are ruled by the illogical and delusional religions, the always you know, conflict-provoking politics, false leaders, the greed, the worship of money and toys, and virtually everything going on now and more to come was foretold by these people, the prophets of old and Billy Meyer. So here we are, pick, you know, pick a topic and we can run through it. And right now, as I say, when I blog, oftentimes I say, look, right. what we're doing now, Michael, is putting it out there for the survivors because most people are not going to pay attention now, no matter how bad it gets. And we're seeing already some examples of just how bad things can get. And we ain't seen nothing yet. Right. And as I mentioned here already, I said you were very controversial and, you know, you represent a very controversial man in one Billy Meyer. Your perspectives and uh, insights have generated significant discussion and uh, debate amongst uh, our audience and amongst everyone else out there. As you are well aware of, Mr. Horn, at this point, obviously. And furthermore, I just wanted to say, you know, I understand that you feel that I have made some uh, efforts and mind efforts uh, truly to sort of kick up the acknowledgement of the Billy Meyer contact case. And of course, you came under scrutiny with one Mr. Michael Shermer. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, you just said it's such an interesting thing, a number of them in that statement about debate. The problem here is that none of these people, and Michael Shermer, I guarantee you, would not want to debate me because I would run circles around him. And even, you know, I have an assistant named Andrea who already ran circles around him in articles online. He couldn't address the skeptics were about to release a blog, probably tonight, that shows the failings of skeptics who've tried to debunk Billy Myers' UFO photos. But you see, the debate only goes on with those people amongst themselves where they can safely exclude having to deal with the facts and having to speak with me. I'm not I've you know, I've written many things that are you know provocative and, as you say, controversial. But I, I think the record is that I'm glad to speak with anybody or any reasonable person. They don't have to certainly agree with me. But if we have a discussion or a debate, I expect first that they will be intelligent and honorable enough to present and rely on facts and evidence, not skeptical challenges that we've buried in the dirt decades ago. So these people our skeptics, the, the skeptics have done more damage, more damage, along with ufology, by the way, which has also just done enormous harm and is, is largely responsible for many of the horrific things that are coming our way. And that's because, well, let's take the current crop. I, I can you know, say to you that the, all the ufology up to the past you know, two, three years has been just gibberish and a waste of time. Now, once the disinformation from the government and people like Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon and oh, all of the, you know, the people that they work with, George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell, all of these people who are seeking attention. What about uh, that Grush guy? Another one uh, for you. I only read, you know, to be quite honest, I read some information. The reason I didn't yeah. bother to listen to him is because all the people that are allowed and live to tell any information for, uh, you know, pertaining to military, you know, they either are towing the party line or, uh, you know, they're simply <laughs> making, making noise. The real truth tellers in terms of government and all that, they do not, um, they do not get airtime. I see. Uh, and they also, here's, here's my barometer. Sure. 
if you are not speaking about the Billy Meyer material, you are lying or concealing or ignorant of the factual truth. So here's an example for our audience tonight. In 2020, Billy Meyer got in touch with me and said that he'd like me to go to Moab, Utah. It wasn't as hot there as it is now, I'm sure, but it was plenty warm. And to look through an archive in a storage facility there that contained material from the late Lieutenant Colonel Wendell Stevens, a wonderful man who was the lead investigator in the Meyer case. And I said, sure. And off we went. Two days of going through boxes. There were 24 boxes. And it was not until the evening of the Sunday on that weekend, the 24th box. It was like a joke. I open it. All the other boxes had stuff we'd seen. It was not important. Blah, blah, blah. And then in this box, staring up at me, if you will, are these photographs. And I'm looking at them and I'm going, oh, must be... Well, it's a UFO, and there's a jet plane. Oh, that must be the 1975, 76, whatever, Mirage jet photos from Switzerland. So I went back to the car. As I opened the door and sat down, the phone rang, and it was Billy calling from Switzerland in his own inimitable way. And he said, um, how did it go? And I said, well, I got the photos, and the gentleman who had them was just extraordinarily generous. He, he he was trying to get thousands of dollars for this archive, and instead he, he gave me the photos for a couple hundred bucks, uh, that portion of the archive, you know, and, and I just said, hey, you've got to, you know, you definitely have to see these. I'm sending them right off. I think they're from some photos you took. Well, sent them to Switzerland, and within the week, I got an email back saying, no, 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 these are not what you think they are. These are never-before-seen photos. They weren't even taken by Billy. They were taken by Wendell Stevens, lead investigator, and their photos of the one of the extraterrestrials in this case, photos in this case of a then top secret, top secret stealth fighter plane. By the way, were you? By the way, I hate to interrupt you, but were these uh, first published in 1979 by? Uh, window Stevens. No, not those photographs. Not. That's the interesting thing about it, Michael. He he never published these. They were sitting in this archive. Oh, okay. For years and I years see. and years. And what happened was that he never told anybody about him either. He leaves them there. Why? Well, first of all, while he was alive, had he. Uh, had he been found there, he, this was these photos were taken at Area 51. That was top, top, top secret. Oh, these are very different than the ones I thought. Okay. Yes, they are. There's a UFO and there's a top secret stealth plane. Seven or nine photos where the they are interacting. The thing is that the UFO barely moves, just moves a little through the series of photos. And the stealth plane is all over the place, moving around, checking this thing out. Well... It turns out um, I get the photos and, and I'm listening, you know, I'm reading what they're telling me. Hey, this is a whole other thing here. I say, OK, so I contact um, I contact a photo expert and he was formerly with Kodak. And I wrote to him and I said, I tell you what, would you just please analyze the photo and tell me what you find? But even at least as importantly, Tell me what the information on the back of the photo is about. He said, okay. So it takes him a few days. And then I get a thing back. He says, well, I've analyzed this very carefully. These two objects are in real photographs. These are not digital photos. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute, he said. A and they are uh, interacting clearly here in the same planes you know, there, it's not like there's an overlay or anything. And the stealth, he simply said the airplane has indications. You know, you take a photo, you capture somebody. He says it, there's movement involved with that plane. Well, the UFO is very stable uh, and there's no apparent movement with it. And he said, as for 
the information in the back, that has your Kodak processing showing that the photos were processed in 1980, May, 80s, he said. He didn't give me the exact year. He says, and of course, that made it consistent, if you will, with what I learned from Switzerland, 1981, never before seen photos. So here's where it gets interesting. It's By nice. the way, for those who don't know, Wendell Stevens is a former United States Air Force pilot. Yes, and, and a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. Right. right. Just, just to add some context for those who have no idea what the hell we're talking about. Yes, he he's no longer with us, but he was just a wonderful man who, uh, you know, just – if people really knew what he went through to keep his word and to be, how to put it, just to not break the trust that he had, because people think that he actually began his contacts with Billy Meyer yeah. in about 1978, but they met, I think, something like 10 years earlier. Would you consider I him a sort of whistleblower of sorts? Oh, my gosh. He was major. The original one. He was put in jail under trumped up child molestation charges. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And we know this, that this was a setup from several different parties who knew. And what happened is Stevens had actually been taken on board the craft. He's one of the very, very, very few people that, in addition to Meyer, the play Aaron and their associates interacted with, who interacted with Meyer over this period of time brought on board a craft to show him things. And so he takes these photos. He would have been shot if they'd seen him at Area 51. So I think wisely he did not reveal these photos. He let them be discovered after his death because they probably would have, if, if, if he put those out anytime from when he took them until he passed away, uh, prison probably would have been a lightweight experience for him because they would have tortured the hell out of him to get the details. How did you get there? You know, he can't just walk onto Area 51. And from what we learned, somehow the ETs were involved in getting him there and getting him out. I don't have more info on that. But what I did was I called, you know, I leave messages for people in government and scientists and all. You know, I even tried to contact, not for this, but I've tried to contact the phony and profiteer Avi Loeb, who's only interested in putting his face out there and making money and stealing evidence. It's a shameful thing what these people have, have gone into. Okay, so I contact an office in, in Washington. I leave a message for Representative Andre Carson, a Democrat who's hosting House and investigation on counterterrorism, counterespionage, all these counter counter things. I don't expect to call back because these people don't call back. And then, surprisingly, in a matter of days, the phone rings. I, I see a 202 number. I guess that's in Washington. And I thought, I don't know anybody there. I was about to simply click it off as spam. But I thought, I'll answer. I don't know why. And I hear a woman say, uh, you know, my name is so-and-so. And I thought, oh, no, you know, soliciting for a political thing. And she said, I'm a national security advisor for Representative Andre Carson. I said, seriously? She said, yes, you left a message and you mentioned having photos showing a stealth plane and a UFO. Would you be kind enough to send us copies so I can share it with the committee? I said, yeah, sure. Why not? I sent them off and she emails me back a few days afterwards, you know, four or five, whenever. Right. Said, Thank you. Got the photos. I'm going to send them up the chain so people can see these. Well, they simply censored them. Nobody knows about these photos, uh, unless, of course, they have either read the blog or they saw one of my interviews with, uh, what's his name, Clayton Morris on Redacted, where I sh you know, showed the photos and talked about it. So you see, the government is, of course, again, conning the gullible, stupid people, especially in ufology, among the dumbest people on the planet. They don't want to know the truth because suddenly a bunch of burger flippers have decided that they are <laughs> UFO researchers. I mean, to be fair, though, Mr. Horn, and there's that, there's that habit again, Michael. Yes, thank uh, you. I have to admit, though, it is entertaining to hear, though, for once, this sort of dialogue going on again. I think it's kind of refreshing. In my mind, I mean, personally, you know, you know with everything going on around the world, I think it's not, uh, it's not that terrible, but I do find a lot of it questionable at best, especially with our own government and their proven track record. Oh, gosh. As you know. 
it's shameful because this is not a trivial matter. Our government, look, if, when people read the Meyer material and they see that for how long the warnings about Russia, don't provoke Russia, phony provocations, Ukraine setting up to draw Russia into a war, the agenda is and has been for decades to destroy Russia and take it over in a world hegemony, you know, what would you call a process right. that's existed actually for far, far longer than people know. It's from the inception of this country. It's been the agenda. So we have known, and Meyer's material is so specific about things. You know, I, this just pops into my mind because it's in the material. In 1987, Billy Meyer published something called the Henoch Prophecy. Prophecy, right, yeah. Right? Remember that? Oh, yes. Okay. In that document from 87, translated into English in 2002, there's, there's like well over 200 and some examples, and your jaw drops when you, you say, well, if this was really written in 87, why doesn't the world know about it? And I won't go into everything, but I'll go into just a few pertinent things here, which is something like this. In that document, they foretell, 1987, the Russians are going to move their troops to a place called Arkhangelsk in northern Russia, Siberia, or what have you. This will be in preparation for their attacks against Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Finland. Now, hold on. 1987, Russia's not involved with any hostilities with these, these people and nothing major. Maybe here and there there's a little border. Dispute, but what's the, why would they do that? And then it says in there, this is also in preparation for their ultimate attack when they come through Alaska and Canada into the mainland USA. This is after we've m made enough fatal mistakes that they and China and other powerful countries and even quite possibly, and this is said back in 87, an extraterrestrial race will come in a united front against the Western powers. I say kiss your ass goodbye. And so do the prophecies when they talk about America will be a country of complete destruction. Are you saying there's going to be a false flag operation, a fake well, alien invasion, per se? No, this thing that I'm speaking about won't be the false flag. The false flag thing is still a possibility, especially since now the government is amping up all this BS about alien threat. This started with Lou Elizondo and the sightings of this and the Tic Tac videos. Well, to so be honest me... with you, uh, Mr. Horn, and there's that habit again, Michael, <laughs> um, I, I'm going to probably do that all night. Um, it first started actually with Ronald Reagan during that speech at the UN. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, it picked up because... But yes, it did pick up, you're right. Yeah, I mean, our government, meaning the, the top levels of national security and secret military, if you will, have known right. that since 1915, Woodrow Wilson knew, because during the First World War, the antagonists, protagonists, whatever you want to call them, were sighting unknown objects in the skies... And they thought, each side thought, that must be a secret weapon from the other side. When nobody is being attacked, then they're going, what's this? And when the various intelligence services said, it ain't coming from here, there was a conspiracy of silence, if you will, even among the enemies, because no power wants to acknowledge that there is something outside of their control. So it was better to say nothing at that time for quite some time until the Roosevelt administration after or around the time, pardon me, uh, you know, of crashes being known and even secret crashes that aren't publicly announced. Ultimately, you would have, you know, Roswell and all that. But when the Roosevelt administration under threat of death, they had H.G. Wells the writer and sure. Orson Welles, the producer and yeah. the actor, produce and perform War of the Worlds to scare the crap out of people. And this was done because they realized, first of all, 
that while there was clear evidence of other intelligent, highly advanced, if you will, beings, they didn't pose a threat to us. But the threat posed to the controllers by just the reality of an existence of something they can't control, in a sense, they were right to assess that that could be very destabilizing. But they were not right about the way they went about it. And to this day, the whole thing has been promoted to use the demonization of basically non-hostile extraterrestrials for a false flag, for a false threat, and all this to generate more money for more weapons, for more endless delusional U.S. wars. That's what you're seeing. And this agenda with Russia, who was promised by the U.S. and NATO that they would not, quote unquote, move one inch further eastward. People don't understand. Look, I'm not a great historian. Meyer is. And he's put all this information out there. And other people know about it, too. So this is so bad for the people in this country. I'll put it this way. There's so much happening simultaneously. And I'll tie it into this for a second. In 2006, I may have told you this before. I was in Switzerland and I was with Billy and I turned him one day out of nowhere. I wanted to, I asked him, I said, Billy, was the Iraq war fundamentally about our, our oil? He said, no, it's fund fundamentally, it's about your dollar. And if things go a certain way, you may as well roll cigarettes with your paper money. Now, that video, I actually have a video where I told the story after I got back, has been out since 2006. And in two, well, 2017, 2017, however you like it, Meyer elaborated on a whole bunch of things that were coming. One of them was warning about the cashless society, warning about how the elite would, you know, dispossess people. He specifically went into a number of paragraphs about how phony populism is, how it's really in the service of the elite. It's in the service of people like Trump, you know, whatever you may think, positive or negative, and others who want more and more power and falsely try to appeal to certain elements of the common man, rise up and this and that, and we'll make this great. It's, it's a sham. And there's a writer with the Financial Times. I just put out a blog today. I just saw this guy's article. He's, he's a writer, and I think he's maybe based in India. And he calls out the populist scam. And he's the only other person that I know of who calls out this whole scam. Well, Meyer is calling it out in 2017. And he's saying, you know, the elite are going to be swimming in wealth. Average people are going to be dispossessed and burdened with taxes. And the American people will be dispossessed and the military and police will turn against, by order of the government, against the partly heavily armed population. Do you know when he said that, by the way? Yeah. October, I, I don't know if it was the 17th. It was October of 2017. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay. And he also, in the same document... He talks about how the U.S. will uh, cooperate with NATO and mm. launch attacks ultimately from a base in Germany. A year later, that base was spoken about as being set up. They, they aren't wrong, and I'll tell you why. Here's the, the bottom line of the prophecies, a lot of them. And I can prove this in less than 15 minutes, and I don't know we you have to do it right now. But <laughs> Billy Meyer and his play are in friends. Not only are space travelers... They are verifiably, easily proven and substantiated time travelers. And I don't mean new age gibberish, fake UFO contactees who claim to have been to my... All, I'm speaking about people who could only know and publish certain highly specific scientific, geopolitical, environmental, medical yes, COVID, and economic information long before it's ever discovered and long before we would even have the means to discover it or the events would take place. 
timely travelers. And that's why these, especially the predictions, Meyer publishes prophecies too, meaning if we don't change our ways, this will happen for sure. There are other things that are predictions, meaning they will happen and they are unchangeable. And that's largely because they are either, pardon me, cosmic events, like the approach of asteroid Apophis in 2029, or if it doesn't slam into the Earth then, in 2036. But these are co more cosmic events, but man-made. Most of these problems have their origins in human behavior, what we've done over the millennia, the addictions to these mind enslaving, also violence producing religions, crazy, stupid, mind numbing politics that never solves the problems that it always continues to create. And nonetheless, people keep looking for answers outside of themselves. Well, as I said, my mission in that sense failed, but I keep doing the work because I recognize it's more for the survivors. Well, you're just seen a different uh, publicist, Michael. I'm sorry? I said, you've just seen a different publicist and you're back in the game. <laughs> well, I don't have a publicist. I you do need everything one. myself. And I have had, at one point, I had a publicist here and there for never for more than about, I think, two months. Once for four weeks, once for two months. But you see, I can't, first of all, pu real good publicists, A, are extremely expensive, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month. I don't have that to spend on a publicist. <laughs> clearly. And to get one of these people, you know, you have to get their attention. And if I had their attention, I'd still have to come up with five or $10,000 a month. And, you know, it, it's like, that ain't going to happen. Now, I, I would look, I've not only I, but other people have reached out to people that said like Joe Rogan or Lex Fridman, Joe Rogan, I'm sorry, you know, the man is stupid. He was given by friends of ours, Meyer's photo book, 617 clearer than you can imagine UFO photos, 1964. They really sent him all those photographs. They, they brought him the book. They Why? Gave it to his manager. And mm. that was the time he most recently, within the past couple of years, interviewed Dan Aykroyd, who brings up Billy Meyer. And he says, Joe Rogan says, oh, wait a minute. I think I had a book from that guy. And he picks up the book opens it up, and he starts leafing through it, and he's saying, oh, yeah, all these photos, they've got to be Photoshopped. Billy Meyer never took a photo beyond 1981, with the exception of a recent one, where he, well, that's about the U.S. Capitol, I'll tell you later, but he never took photos beyond, at any time when <clears throat> the uh, computer, the personal computers were available. Right, and just let me drive this home really quickly, arguably the Billy Meyer contacts is again one of the most if not the most controversial ufo case that uh, we've ever had here spanning way over 75 years yeah you're right and it's a controversial it's pretty wild it's controversial because it's real and the majority of people who are even just interested in ufos and all that want to be entertained and they do not expect Really, I mean this literally. They do not expect to see anything that is singularly authentic, unparalleled, and would have an impact on their lives, their survival. It's entertainment. It's distraction. Those quick little sound bites. A little clickbait, yeah. You know. Yeah. So this is real, and people are not prepared for it. And you can thank you know, the intelligence services aren't filled only with stupid people. There's a lot of highly intelligent, highly negative people in the intelligence world. Now, ufology is filled mainly with stupid people. I, I can't think of any. And my definition means people in a field who have literally resisted, denied, de attempted to debunk, attacked, ignored and suppressed the only evidence None of these people, Stephen Greer, Lobby, they have no evidence. And they just keep spinning tales and telling you, oh, this is what's going on. And we know this. They don't know a thing of significance, which makes them perfect representatives to the American people who largely prove every election cycle that they don't know their butt from a hole in the ground. And by the way, Mr. Horn, and I did it again just for uh, 
just for comedy purposes here. Some say you've been a part of the problem with the Billy Meyer contacts. And personally, I don't feel that way. I just know that you ruffled more than just a few feathers with your strong opinions on the Meyer case. And of course, your dismissal of the rest of everyone else's experiences and, and stories. Yeah. Um, your thoughts and rebuttal on that. Sure. Well, I ruffled the feathers, as I said. I acknowledge that. But not a one, I mean, not a one of those people, certainly not a one of the prominent people, not a one of the wannabes on Twitter and social media. And I've invited people, you want to debate this? They won't discuss, let alone debate, because number one, none of the so-called evidence, pardon me, experts, have even one piece of independently authenticated evidence of extraterrestrial manufacture. It's not my fault. They don't have it. It's more their fault that they want to keep on plugging nonsense. No evidence. So if I call them out, I would think, look, if somebody says to me, if Michael Shermer says, Sure. Comes in your show. That Michael Horn, he's the biggest quack in ufology. That guy's just representing a hoax. I would take that guy apart in two minutes and you say to him, okay, Michael Shermer, Let's have the discussion. I'll hoax it and I'll be a really good moderator. He's never going to do it because it's too easy to wipe the floor with these people. They're all, on one level or another, simply profiteers. They certainly have no integrity or they would call me out and say, I offered, I'll tell you what I did. This was some years ago when James Randi was still alive. They were having a big skeptical convention or something somewhere. And I'd already tangled with a bunch of these people and just humiliated them. So you rolled up on them. Well, what I did was right. I contacted them and I said, I will come to your event for free. No strings. I will make my presentation on your stage. And you can have any number of your people there to debate it or try to you know, debunk it with me. I will be glad to do this. Absolutely, just invite me. Of course not. They no, they don't want to risk. The truth is not important to they most back people. down. So that the first part of this question that you just posed is, you know, in ruffling feathers, why don't these, it, there's such a vast amount of cowardice, lack of courage, inner strength and integrity this country's full of people. That's true. I mean, a lot of people are like that way, especially people online. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I get you. And to put it in a more professional manner here, there again, there are varying opinions regarding your involvement with the Billy Meyer contacts. And again, while some individuals perceive you as being problematic, I, again, understand that you hold a very different perspective. And some of those individuals get very bent out of shape about you and Billy Meyer. They have been saying the worst things. And of course, we have Michael Horn. And I also was dragged into it. And he's someone who has been quite vocal again. And um, sure. Mr. And I was going to call you Mr. Horn. Michael. Sure. Not Michael Shermer. I'm saying you, Michael. Oh, yeah. He blames me. For you emailing him, by the way. <laughs> yes, he thinks, he, he told me in an email, he says, is this your doing, Michael? This guy is a formerly very religious guy who suddenly embraced atheism and skepticism. By the way, I've spoken with him on the phone once, some years ago. Oh, how pleasant, time. okay. And, and I actually enjoyed talking to him. He wasn't, it's not like he's a bad person. He's just as somebody, what he's doing is highly damaging to people's safety. Well, some say that's, he's a bad person. No. That's I mean, not my not opinion, bad, though. Are we? I'm saying that's not my opinion. I'm just saying it's out there that he's not a good person. I'm not saying that. That's just what I heard. Yeah, I don't know because my interaction with him on the phone was cordial, but his representation, the way he attacks the, the Meyer material and does it in such a cowardly way where he can't ever substantiate what he's saying that doesn't make him a bad person it makes him just somebody who's a coward Ooh. has no integrity no i tell him to his face i have no <laughs> problem with that oh shit because, look if you can't sub stand up for yourself you know what happens look michael 
we have an epidemic. You know, the, the, we hear this epidemic in the country. People in this country, a lot of people, whether it's on the left or the right, lose their minds and their patience and everything very easily. They go out because they can't handle themselves, let alone the difficulties of this world, which can be significant. And they shoot people, people they don't know, people they do know that they kill themselves or they get shot or they get arrested if they survive the ordeal. This is cowardice. And I agree. People who, you know, if you don't have the moral strength, Michael Shermer, if you don't have the integrity to back up, to stand up and, you know, challenge and have a nice little debate on Michael Deacon's show here, set the ground rules. Everybody has a certain amount of time. No ad hominem attacks. I mean, I'm just people think this is all ad hominem. But what, how else do you describe somebody who tries to bait people into discussions, et cetera, and then when they, as he did with my assistant, and then gets, uh, you know, boom, boom, boom. Uh, <laughs> what if I do email him, but then he sends me ground rules and says, well, I don't want to discuss the Meyer contacts. He, that he says he doesn't want to discuss them? Or no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just implying, what if he would say something like that? I'd say, great. And I'd say, uh, you know, let's have a preliminary exchange. We could do it through you, whatever, of those areas that, you know, uh, of contention for him. And I would also say, here are the categories of in information and evidence. I'll be glad to substantiate all my claims. I can, look, I just made a claim a moment ago about Billy Myers, a time traveler. Right. Oh, okay. I, I can, as I said, I can prove that in no time. And the way we do it is we take some of the very specific prophecies and predictions. For instance, just to say something that's happened recently with this tremendous riots in France, uh, which had not only political people, but a high participation from radical Islamists. This is not over. Meyer foretold this. As far back as 58, Paris, France, fires, what's going to come of that? And I'll tell you now, so that someday some people will remember this. What is going to come is that France is going to fall to radical Islam. That is not the same as Islam, peace-loving people who are Muslims. It's not the same thing anymore than radical fundamentalist Christians who may go out and blow people away or radical fundamentalist anybody's of specific religions represent the best of that religion or even what the religion itself teaches and represents. And we're no lovers of religion. We just have to be honest about it. France will fall to radical Islam, but then Russia and China move in and take over the French arsenal as they incorporate it into their far-reaching military push which actually would not have taken place if the insidious, greedy, power-hungry, deluded people in military and military intelligence and government of the U.S. had not for decades thought it would be a great idea to go and rule Russia. Ain't going to happen. And all of the prophecies in the Meyer case foretell very, very, very bad outcome for us here. Sorry. Can you give us a spoiler alert? Well, pick, pick a specific and I'll tell you what I can. Well, what's going to happen with America? America is going to continue to, to provoke and pro, pro, you know, prosecute this war, which was already an American war long before the American people knew about it because of weapons. We published the information about the weapons there and the American personnel manning them and teaching them. Before it ever came out, you know, as always, Meyer is always ahead of the curve on the on the important stuff here. So what will go down is, you know, an expansion of the NATO American efforts. Zelensky may not be around all that long when the Americans are no longer finding him useful. Of course, the Biden administration has helped to assure the bankruptcy of the country by funneling all the taxpayers' money overseas. But people here, sorry, too stupid to, to care about it, a lot of people. I, I think that we, this is a side note, it's my, only th my own thing. I think we're going to see Gavin Newsom as the, and many people may agree or not, but as the Democrat 
candidate, Mr. Compassion and all the rest of the BS. So here's the thing. War expands. Russia and China, as foretold already back in the 70s by Meyer, because they already have been developing an alliance secretly since then, will firm up very much their military and economic alliance. As Meyer foretold in 75 and in 2012, after 2020, the U.S. superpower may cease to exist, meaning not that we're blown out of the you know sky at this point, but we will no longer be a superpower. The next superpower is China. China. Yes. So we'll drop off, in other words, and I feel once that happens, then maybe a possible World War III-like scenario. Well, it, it's, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, I mean, we're in it. The, the problem is that people, you know, are just too numb to really see and they get, you know, swept up in all this polarizing political poisonous uh, nonsense. But this comes and here's the thing. It, it, although it's significant, sure. China, you know, the size of their armed forces and the Russians, they're not by any stretch of the imagination running out of personnel or weapons. You know, remember all the stuff that's been a year in, in the you know, tabloid type news, Putin's dying of cancer. Putin, this, Putin he's still there. You know, yeah, there's been lots trying... of um, strange stories in regards to what's been going on over there. And at this point, I don't know who's winning or losing. We're all losing. In my opinion, yes, we're losing in our wallets. Yes, and we're losing because this is now an inev inevitable conflagration. And the even in the prophecies from long ago, they describe how America will be attacked with weather weapons and technologies that, here's the kicker, in 87, Meyer is talking about biological, chemical, and laser type weapons that are unknown at this time. And he mentions computer controlled. Can you say AI? And he says that the big danger is that these computer controlled read AI weapons will turn against the people. A topic of concern. I don't like that. You, of course not. Terrible. Now it's inevitable because people stupidly, the, the fascination, techno toys, oh, I want to be able to talk to an AI and I want more techno toys in my hands at any cost. The cost, you're not going to like the cost. None of us will. Those people who live at least even the next 10, 15 years are going to hate the cost because that stuff is going to take humankind apart because we cannot control it. It is it's advanced beyond for whatever and all reasons. So this country will be attacked by computer controlled weapons, laser, chemical, biological Cloned fighting machines, human cloned fighting machines. The next step in war. It, it's what? I said it's the next step of war. It is, but we, we have to not fall into this normalcy bias where we even accept this. So, you know, people could say, wow, I think this guy talking about this Billy Meyer thing, he's full of it. Okay, fine. But just follow your news every day and then go to the They Fly blog and start putting in search terms weather, heat, war, anything you want. Meyer is on record in 1951, it's what, 72 years ago? 72 years ago, yeah. He's the first person to specifically warn about the coming unnatural, man-made, climate change, global warming, ozone damage, uh, elementary ray weapons, these things. And he actually first published in 49, but the reason I don't usually cite it is because we don't have enough of a uh, paper trail for some of the stuff that he published when he was a boy, but it's all in there. We do publish the information. <clears throat> I only publish the stuff that I can prove has been published, let's say in German and English before the events happen. Mm. A little dry up here, as you can imagine. So here's what I'm trying to tell people. This people have to kind of get out of normalcy bias and maybe start challenging things and people like me don't just be frogs in boiling water turning up the heat on ourselves but start thinking unplug yourself from all the endless distractions that you insist on holding in the palm of your hand day and night 
or being addicted to on your, you know, on your laptop, iPad, desktop, that you can't pry yourself away. Yeah, use that stuff to search out what's really going on. Oh, there's some, out. there's some parents out there, Mr. Horn, and I did it again just for comedic purposes. There's some parents out there, Michael, who give their children an iPad as soon as they're born, basically, and that thing becomes a new babysitter. So we're pretty much already yeah, uh, so much submerged into technology that sooner or later, and it's happening thanks to Elon Musk, we will fully merge with machine since we already have, actually. Meyer already foretold in detail in 1995 some of what happens quite specifically, and it's even beyond what the so-called transhumanists have written about. So there's nothing new here. You mentioned parents. And these days, right. there are parents who also allow and encourage their children to fall into torturous delusions and even cooperate in subjecting them to murderous at times and certainly disfiguring surgical procedures because these people have been made dumber than dirt by the leftist lunatics, there's plenty on the right, who actually think that there's an infinite number of genders when what there really is or are, there's two genders and there's a multiplicity of preferences, of affection, sexual exploration, sexual relationship. That's all. That's the difference. And the whole thing, this idiocy with men, six feet, four you know, swimming against women, young women, uh, I don't care how old they are, but women athletes. Right. And everybody fighting for the for the rights of these losers, these massive losers. Here's the answer to the trans sports things. You know that we have two genders, men and women. They have sports categories, and they have had them up until now, before the lunatics on the left decided that they knew better than nature and science. So let's give trans males and trans females their own categories. You, trans male, you may compete against trans males. And trans females, you may compete against trans females. If you want to have another section where trans men and trans women want to compete against each other, it's fine. But you know what? Trans women and trans men, here's a bit of news. Gender, clearly females. And they could also, by the way, there are female athletes who are, you know, maybe same sex oriented. That's not the problem here. Women don't want to be in locker rooms with biological men, creeps and cretins. And it's only when you get, in terms of the political spectrum, Democrats, and I'll tell you specifically because I have a strange connection to some of these Democrats. I went to school in Chicago. I was last year. Oh, no, I feel bad for you. <laughs> well, terrible. I went to a, a really good school at the time called Francis Parker Private School and uh, it focused very much on science and, uh, you know, philosophy and teaching. It was a very advanced school. And I, it really, I have to say, I was a slacker. Even though I got through that, I didn't partake of all the benefits available to me because I just wanted to play my guitar and, you know, paint paintings and all that. You stuff. were a and, hippie. Yeah, kind of before they were hippie. This was like 1960. Pre-hippie. Pre, kind of pre-hippie. So what happens is there's a kid in school named Nicky Pritzker. He's a year younger than I am. Now, Nicky Pritzker, I didn't know him very well. He seemed like a, he was a really nice kid. I remember that. He was a popular nice kid. So who is the governor of Illinois these days? A man named Governor Pritzker. He has a brother who's now actually his sister because mm. the brother – but they fund and support and promote this surgical barbarism, this mutilation of children. Ooh. You have to understand, these guys are multi-billionaires, but this, this whole gender reassignment thing is a $2 billion plus dollar a year industry. Got oh, no, I think I might have lost, lost you here for a moment. Oh, you lost me? I lo yeah, I lost you for a second here, just when you were talking about gender mutilation. It's, yeah, gender, re and that means gender reassignment surgery. Right, code word. Eric, and it's a $2 billion a year industry. I don't even case. like saying it. It's just, it's so uh, graphic to me. 
It's horrible. And, and painful, by the way. Oh, please. I, I've seen some of the imagery. I don't even it's, want to see the. I don't want to see that. Holy shit. You don't want to see it. Oh, my God. Should. Anybody who thinks that this is just another brilliant advancement in, in compassion should have their heads examined. I don't understand how this became the new normal, as they say, Michael. The fact that we even have to uh, debate this is, it well, says a lot about humanity. It's a $2 billion a year industry that some crazy leftists managed to start promoting. So they're, they're making uh, large amounts of money. In other, in other yeah. words, a bank, they are making, they're making it rain at a strip club kind of money. Yeah. And then well, some, actually, Jeffrey Epstein kind of money. That That's more like Right. It. Here's the thing about it with this all this money and stuff. If an adult, male or female, whatever their persuasions may be, wants to have such surgeries, I, I won't even use, you know, adjectives. Sure. Majority, but they want those surgeries, then that's their choice. Taking young children who just don't even know anything about sexuality a lot of these kids are you know pushed into this stuff at very yeah, young ages. Man, they're just kids and 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 boys and girls go through different phases right maybe they want you know uh uh what do you call it uh i don't know they, they want dolls when they're this and yeah that. some kids actually end up liking uh, their own gender for a short time and then they get a little older and they're like oh wait a minute i'm, I'm straight that's right or yeah. or actually they go straight and then they're like oh wait a minute i'm gay now <laughs> <laughs> Any of the above can Yeah, I mean, it happens when, you know, those are, the, what I'm getting at is those are adult decisions that you make in life, and they're forcing children to make those, well, they're, actually, they're deciding for them in some cases. Some parents throw that idea out there. I've, I've seen many women out there dressing uh, their kids up, and, you know, they're dressing up their biological boy in uh, women's clothing. Yes. And there are, look, there are kids, I think, in all honesty, if you've grown up in, in let's say, well, certainly in the cities, you know, I, I right. live in the major cities, you grow up, you're going to see young kids who display behaviors, even physical characteristics that seem more congruent with the opposite gender than theirs. Now, and in some cases, they have the propensity for that. Yeah. But... but in a lot of cases, you can see women who are just happen to be very strong and all that stuff, and they are heterosexual. Or you can see a very, quote unquote, attractive feminine type woman who's homosexual. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care what people do privately. Sure. But these demonically stupid people that get people to vote and endorse and support and create movements around torture and mutilation, you know what? Um, there are days when I feel like, you know what, this thing that's coming to our country, hurry it up because this place needs to be cleaned. Now, that's a thing that I don't really stand with. It's an emotional reaction whenever I see this crappy stuff on the news. Yeah, this isn't a left or right issue, by the way. It's an issue with uh, humanity. Which part? Well, the whole gender sort of um, push here, the Trojan horse to sort of mm -hmm. chop off body parts, in other words. No, uh, it's far more on the left from what I've been. I've got, I look, I know a retired doctor. I met him. I was, I went to another school with him uh, more than 50 years ago. He's now retired. He's a retired surgeon and doctor. And we've gone back and forth about stuff. And he, you know, he, he used to send me a slogan, vaccination will save the nation. Uh, okay, Whoa. he stopped doing that after I <laughs> pushed back on that. But then he, I said to him, you know, what about, you know, this gender? He said, oh, he says, well, that's, a, that's really helpful. You should ask your trans friends. I said, well, I'm being honest with you. I don't, I don't have any trans friends that I know of. And if I did, I guess I could ask him. But I have enough common sense and humanity to me that when I see pictures of little girls whose breasts have been chopped off and start reading the details and things about men whose gender, uh, children, young, non-adults, I don't need to ask anybody what my values are. And I, this guy didn't, you know, we haven't spoken since then. I haven't communicated. Adults shouldn't be talking to children about sexual orientation, in my opinion. It's all... It's money. That's and insane. The of pedophilia. That That's exists. insane. 
I don't know if all the conspiratorial stuff of bit about pedophilia yeah. is true and accurate. I know that it's been going on for centuries and centuries. Uh, it's been endemic in the Catholic Church. I learned about that in the 50s. I was just a young teen. My mother happened to be talking about it with me, about the, you know, the things the Catholic Church does. I don't know why. No. Oh. How we got into it, and then she said something about, you know, as you know, they, they abuse. She didn't want a priest to take advantage of you, Michael. Yeah, and we weren't religious. There was no danger there, but I guess she wanted to make sure. Make sure you're safe. I mean, that's a good mom. Look, she was way ahead of her time in terms of that's her good. values and clarity. And I mean, there's some very, very disgusting people out there that break the law um, in in ways that you didn't even think were imaginable. So it's good that she told you about that. Every parent yes. should uh, tell their kids that there are strangers out there that will do very bad things to you if they can. Yes, yes, and yes. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you say that and it's like we used to, you know, even when I was, you know, younger in parenting years and years ago, you know, you want to protect your children against perversion and uh, invasion of their sanctity and all this stuff. These days, you have had all these imbeciles who promote it. And, and what can you do? Right. right. They want to talk it, about it. it. It's such a great cause. It really is far more on the left. I have not met anybody. I know people clearly on the right. I've not heard one of them ever endorse this barbarity. But, you know, we... I don't know. We've probably beaten this one a bit as well as it deserved to be, because if people don't wake up and they allow their their children to be tortured and, and their own minds to be corrupted, where they think there's oh there's an infinite number of genders. I uh, I identify with being a cantaloupe. Well, great. You know, I identify with being an airplane pilot. Oh, we've we've Get gone out. way off course here as humanity, in my opinion. And you know, I do follow the science, and females have. Two X chromosomes. Yeah. Yep. You can't change that with surgery. It's just, it's just that simple. You're just you following the science here. That's all. Have your blood tested. If you are now showing different chromosomes than we started off with, then I'll then you are a woman or a man, whatever you want to be. But if the chromosomes are the same, then you simply are finding a way. If you're an adult and you decide to express that way, I'm not going to even have the conversation with you because I don't object to what people do, what you know, adults do. To or yeah, with. that's that's so. what they want to do in their own yeah. uh, bedroom. We don't really care. But yes, uh, Michael, I'm glad that we both agree on that, though. Yeah, of course. I think, you know, you don't have to be on any side of a political spectrum. All you have to do is have your ethics, your morals, your values and your common right. sense intact. And you go, uh, duh, that don't work. You know, I identify as this. I identify. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, People I, are nuts. someone's just been convicted of a crime. He stands up and he says, I'm sorry, but I identify as a free man who's just been released from this court. That, that's pretty yeah, good. Try that. Yeah, I, I want to try that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to remember but, that one. Um, but Michael, I got to go back and uh, say this once again. You know, you're a gentleman who's very controversial. You ruffled all sorts of feathers, as I said earlier. And, you know, you've dismissed so many other cases out there. Yes. But earlier we mentioned... Uh, Roswell for a second here. Real case. So you believe in Roswell, though? You think that was no, a real no. one? No, I don't believe anything. I have. You don't reason. believe anything? Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, parsing words, but I cannot prove that Roswell was real. I was going to say, according to, and there are other people, it isn't just Meyer, they have stated long ago, this was a real crash. There have been several uh, there were android b beings that were there. Some were dead, some were alive. I heard about Roswell in 1957, I think it was. I was something like, I don't know, 14. I'm in a high school. I remember where I was standing. A kid walks up to me. I knew him a little. I don't kick to this day. I don't remember who he was. And he starts talking to me about, it. he said, my dad's in the Air Force. And do you know that there, there was a crashed Flying saucer, that was, of course, the term at the time, a crashed flying saucer. And they took it off to a, he, my dad said they took it to an Air Force base in Ohio. That would have been uh, Wright Patterson, if that was accurate. And that always stuck with me because when Roswell came to my attention a couple decades later, I thought, oh, my gosh, that kid was talking about Roswell. And the player and have said, yes, there have been these crashes 
they're, they don't involve the actual extraterrestrial humans who send these exploratory craft out, but they're highly advanced people and they created androids who, you know, work these craft and, and do all this exploratory work. So that is said to be real. But here's the problem. There's no real verifiable evidence left. So the government will continue to dismiss it. That's why the government censored the UFO photos that Wendell Stevens took from 1981. We know who the pilot of the stealth was, a guy named Ray Farley. We know this stuff. They don't want it out because they know that if anybody has any working brain cells, they're going to realize that this whole UFO threat thing is a, is a scam. And I'll give you one more thing on it. The Tic Tac video and all this stuff about UFOs. Sure. In 2015, I asked Billy about the people that he had spoken and written about that he called the Earth foreigners or the long-skulled people, long-skulled people. And he said, yes, there are five groups of people who do not originate on Earth, who are here, they are mainly based underground. He says some of them are referred to by the same name, even though they're different groups, we, they're categorized in a certain way. So here's what they are. There is a group that had ancestors in Egypt and in Central and South America long ago. They are now based underground. And interestingly enough, my editorial here, you can see the artifacts online. You remember the statue of Nefertiti? You ever see that one? I Yes. Okay. As it rotates to the side, you notice how her head is elongated in the back? That isn't a mistake by the sculptor. There are sculptures similar to this. Many, many in the Egyptology collections in South and Central American museums, these people, these humans who were here, had a long protruding skull. Even certain ones of the... People, especially, I think, more in South America, sometimes in Africa, yeah. they bind their children's heads to make them look like these people. Lots of tribes these, do that, yes. They were some of the gods that were here. Now there's a couple other groups that are here, including, as Meyer said, future Earth travelers. Time travelers from somewhere in Earth's future where there's some survivors involved. And these people are here. So I said to Billy about some like these you know, descendants of the gods. I said, so is there like a little town or something underneath? And he, and he leans forward. He says, it's a state. I said, oh, state. Mm. I mean, making very clear. And he said, these are the people whose craft, other than all the, you know, secret military, are seen all over the world. And recently, he's been referring to, you know, the Americans now, you know, with their sh chasing after UFOs and shooting at them and stuff. And he says, it's not a good idea for the Americans, if they want to communicate with one of these races, to be shooting at them. So it's one of these races that it, it was said in the pro prophecies from 20, 1987 will come to the aid of the non Western powers when we go crazy with all of our war. And that will obliterate our country. I mean, this, I can say this and it can happen and nobody will remember. And nobody will even care five minutes from hearing this because that's how people are. Those people, maybe the ones who might care are the ones who will be mad at me for saying it. And I'll go, well, that looked great. At least you paid attention. Oh, there'll be some mad people here for sure. Well, yeah, there are. But, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to be controversial. Honest to gosh, I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm trying to present what I've been studying and researching and investigating for 44 years. I've been making presentations since 87 Albeit most of them have been, you know, with, you know, seemingly just sure. kind of a little more easy to take because it wasn't revealing all that stuff. I didn't even know all of the prophecies at that time. So Absolutely. And uh, let me hit you with a bit of a throwback here. What do you make of the whole Galactic Federation of Light, uh, gentlemen, out there, that group of folks out there? Whenever you hear these new agey names, you know it's utter nonsense. It goes it was, back to the 90s, I, I believe, yes, with children, Nid, with children Nidal, I believe. Sheldon Nidal. There is another guy, Mark something or other, or Matt something. There's a bunch of them. I was going in LA. I was going to channeling events in 1986. I did that over a few years, and it was I got a, the only thing of value I got was some material for 
songs of mine. I was doing, I started doing new age comedy and there was, <laughs> I remember I, I met all these, you know, people that were in these new age groups. Right. And there was a group of women and, <laughs> and I, along with my dad, we traveled to Hawaii with them and all. And there was this one girl and I'm sure she won't hear the show. I don't know where she is or who. Her name was Sandara. That was the name. She Sandara. She was Sandara. And I incorporated her into a song. I, I did this introduction where I said I went to this new age event. <laughs> I didn't know anybody. And I saw yeah. these sprouts and tofu and stuff. And there, standing across the room with her back towards me in a diaphanous gown with beautiful blonde hair it was a sparkling vibrant creature and I went over I had to meet her and I I reached out and as my hand extended and was about to allow my finger to tap her on the shoulder she spun around and with sparkling blue eyes put her finger up to her lips and said Shh, let me tell you I lead a simultaneous existence as a commander of a spacecraft here on a fact-finding mission and I don't want to get involved Wow. So, yeah. So she literally said that kind of thing to me. So it's I incorporated very, the uh, power, song. That's a very powerful opening line there. It was great. Oh, what do you so, say to that? So, just to give it, so the opening of the song was, Darling, you mean so much to me, you and all your entities. But when I want some love and passion, I don't want to share the action with dead Egyptians or Tibetan outer space folks trying to get in. I can set your spirit free. Just leave your body. Here with me. And it went on from there, you know, and it was a chorus, leave your body, leave your body, leave your body here with me. So I, I made a lot of, um, let's say, uh, material out of that material, the new age material, sprouts, health foods, channeling, UFOs, you name it. Right. And I did a whole comedy act. And then I decided to, because I was enlisted by a guy who was then representing the Billy Meyer case, he said, hey, I love your songs. You want to do a few songs before I speak? I said, sure. Then I'd go in the audience, sat down, and then I re would recognize where he was not accurate in his presentation of the Meyer material. And I asked him, I said, hey, would you mind if I made some presentation? Oh, great. I'll give you a slide tray full of codex. Very nice guy. He got asked by the Meyer people to stop making presentations, and I started making them. And I stopped doing, you know, new age comedy and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, people, they think I want to be kind I don't want to be controversial. I just simply want to put stuff out. Well, and it, it's, just, thinking. it's just the fact that you, you probably gone after so many people and they, they think of you in that sort of light. Well, I only, the people I've gone after, it's usually two situations. They have attacked the Meyer case and, or me, or they've made claims that they cannot substantiate and have been, let's say, participated in suppressing or attacking, ignoring, denying the reality of the Meyer case. I get a little upset about that because I know they're liars, and what they should do is come at me. They should sue me. They should demand that I substantiate my claims, and I'll say, fine, we'll both do that together, equal opportunity. So, it, you know, as I said, look, Joe Rogan thought that Billy Meyer's photos were taken with photoshop mm. how bright is the guy and he's had every phony ufo person on you can imagine Sent, give him real stuff put it in his hands he can't see it he can't recognize it the the brilliant intellectual lex fridman has on every quack in ufology including avi Loeb and others we send him all the documents and i'm not the only one to send stuff about the meyer case and my per doesn't respond you know because he only will have on people who are, I'm sure, credentialed and recognized by academia who know nothing and can't prove anything they say. So we get, consequently, no real engagement, no debate. If the people knew the truth, it's hard for me to believe that they would still go back to this phony UAP, unidentified aerial phenomena. Make it more vague so you don't say to somebody, that's an unidentified flying object. It's got density to it. No, it's phenomena. It's ethereal. So they, they have... Smart... I would love to hear you talk to uh, Stephen Bassett on that matter. He would get uh, very angry with you. He's angry at me because... He's always I'm... angry at you. Yes, he is. Because I called him out for the liar and phony is. And what happened was this. 
I, I met Stephen Bass at home oh, probably just short of 20 years ago. I just talked I, to him. I just talked to him a few weeks back, by the way, at a contact in the desert. Yeah. He was out there and I um, met him for the very first time. I should have mentioned you just to, yeah. just to, yeah. just to get him to get smile. His pressure going. Yeah. Something. Here's what happened. And, and people might understand better Go why ahead. I called the phony out. I, after I met with him at an event, uh, I've actually met with him several times and spent a total of over five hours cumulatively saying to him, look, you're holding these so-called X events or whatever. Five hours, by the way. Each, I would, honest to goodness, That's a long time. I would buttonhole him and I'd say, look, let's talk about this. I'm willing to come to your event. But five hours? Well, I, I don't mean I spoke to him five hours at one time. I okay, said, okay. Over several I was days, like, oh my I, God. I wherever I find him. Hey, Stephen, I'll bring the Meyer case to your event. I'll present it because you're presenting people who are supposedly witnesses and stuff, but they don't know their ass from their elbow. They've seen something. They have no idea what it is. I'll get, I'll show them. My, well, it's not time for it yet. We're, we're sending faxes to Washington to get people to help uh, reveal the cover. I said cover up. The only thing left to cover up. So I, I'm telling you. I went through this for a cumulative. I remember keeping track of it. It was five hours over something like four, three or four meetings with him. One of them was in the lobby of the shirt. So you Hill tried, Street. in other words, try, you tried. try to get you try to get to him like you try to talk to him. I have done. Yes. And I've sent him stuff and all the rest. Stephen Greer, 2004 or so. I'm in Los Angeles, whole life expo again. I'm on the panel, the yeah. UFO panel. He's sitting two people away from me on the panel. My turn to speak. I get up and I say, I turn to him, Stephen, I'd love to make everything in the Billy Meyer case available to you because, the, you know, while you're doing such a good thing, you know, trying to get disclosure, none of the people that you turn to know what they've seen. You don't have evidence. This is all yours. He would not even look in my direction. He's another one. These people are profiteers. They talk a great game. They make people think for some reason. They don't fool me, but they make people think they actually have uh, something. They repeat anecdotal information, stuff that sounds important. Well, the government has evidence of this. Okay, fine. Well, Linda sure. Moen Howe was there, and I saw her on a panel right next to Graham Hancock. Yeah. And I thought, why is she even here, by the way? Yeah. And, um, well, she got on the mic and basically was saying, well, I'm in talks with a physicist and X, Y, and Z. And she kept saying, I talked to a physicist. And then she would go on. Sure. Look, these, these people, the grandstanders. Um, I thought they paid you for this. Pardon me? I, I thought they paid her for this. There are people that are funded or backed by parties known or unknown to keep these narratives going, to pump out this stuff. These people, based on merit alone, they'd all be done if they were not assisted and also fairly to say assisted by the stupidity of the masses who don't know the difference between flim flam and facts and evidence. Well, so, there goes my uh, there goes my media pass, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. No, you you can tell them I was you just tell them, you know, Michael Horn was on and he's very controversial and that's the end of it. Well, there goes your media pass, too. Oh, listen, oh, your uh, speaking engagement. They're, they're not going to call you now. No, no. I was there a few years ago. It was like, right before the uh, pandemic was my first and last appearance. Oh, you were I called you, you, out these people publicly you while were I was there. there and while they were presenters at this thing. And I put really? up a slide with their names. I did not know you were a part of that at one time. I had one. I was invited one time. I think it was 2019. I have it. And there's a presentation. Oh, wow. I put up the slide saying all yep. of these people are liars. Oh, my <laughs> God. No evidence. Yeah, I wondered why they never called me back. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing with the uh, whole, with the, um, what do you call it? That IU, is hilarious. The International UFO Congress. I called out all these people, including, you know, well, look, poor old Linda Moulton Howe. When, oh, when no. we put up photographs from uh, Switzerland where Billy Meyer showed right. cars to a – the surface of cars to a group of uh, producers from London, WAG TV, showing seven-fingered handprints etched into the surface of cars completely – the papillary lines allegedly erased that has a very acidic skin 
composition. And these guys, we were, they were right up there photographing this thing. But real clear evidence that it was on a few cars, lasted for years throughout the winters, the summers, everything. Linda Moulton House sees this and contacts me. Can I bring some scientists to examine those cars? And I said to Billy, hey, can she? Bring, oh, yeah, as long as they don't destroy the car. Well, naturally, she didn't come because she, she realized, wait a minute, Billy Meyer, that's real. I float all this hysterical conspiratorial stuff. If I mention Billy Meyer and it's real, everybody's going to go look at that. So she didn't come. This is just, you know. Ugh. So she had um, had some interest in the case and then sort of disappeared sure. at one well, point. It, it was, well, look, that evidence, you know, we have it online. It's free. People can look at it. And it's, it's quite real. Uh, it, it certainly wasn't painted on, but. It's not etched in with some kind of technique. I mean, these are on cars. Anyway, people can look at make up their own mind. Sure. But and one of the things that skeptics have uh, examined, and I used quotations around that, they say the photographs, the UFOs appear to be suspended on strings. <laughs> <laughs> ah, beautiful. Here, you gave me a great opportunity. 2004, I'm presenting in Santa Clara, California at a UFO expo. A guy walks up to me at my table and he says, hey, I, uh, I want to apologize to Billy Meyer and you. I said, what are you talking about? I don't know you. He says, no. He says, but um, you know the claims of Cal Corp. I said, oh, yeah, with his doctored photos. He says, yeah, I'm the guy that did that. I said, what are you talking about? He said, look, I was, I was freelancing doing graphic and photographic work. And I was approached by this guy, Cal Corp. I didn't know anything about him. And he showed me these photos and he says, well, what would it take to, to put a, a line in there so it would look like the photo that, uh, of the object is really a photo of an object suspended on a string? He said, well, it shouldn't be too hard. And he said, so I did these. And, and Cal said, you know, d do a number of these for me and I'm going to pay you for your work. He says, well, I gave it to Corf. He never paid me. Here's his card, by the way. He reaches in his pocket. He's got Cal Corf's card. Well, Cal Corf faked all of that. And it's even worse than that. Cal, Cal Corf outed himself, and I have this on my blog, and he outed himself. I'm not accusing him of anything. He outed himself as a pedophile. He explained how he had gone to Switzerland, Billy Meyer's property. He went under a false name. He wore a disguise, and he had a hidden camera in a briefcase or a satchel of some form with a pinhole in it so he could film. And he talked about filming little girls and boys there. Is this, uh, the a, con is, is this a convicted pedophile, by the way? No, he's simply self-admitted. You know, a lot of pedophiles may or may not be convicted. So a self-admitted one. Okay, okay. Yeah, it doesn't make them pedophiles and it doesn't mean, mean that they aren't. So... I thought that that was a rather uh, interesting thing. Right. He also admitted and put up photos of where he had stolen Meyer's UFO photos and had them put on cups, at least cup, maybe saucer. So, I mean, this guy is, is a crazy person, and he outed himself. Uh, since then, he hasn't been too interested in debating me or anybody else from what I can tell. And again, I did not come out and say he's a pet he did it for himself he admits it right there so apart from that he is a forger he has forgeries done he's a deceiver he's a liar he approached me in 2009 online saying hey you know you're not a bad guy let's do a project together a dvd yikes yeah i'll represent the you know con view against Meyer. You, you might know, not want to hang out with a minor attracted person, as they call them. <laughs> well, not a good idea. He didn't, it, to, honestly, he didn't say that. I can't accuse him of it. What he did say was, you, you, Michael, you'll do the pro part. I'll do the con part. And we'll put it out in a DVD. And I said, well, I guess that's fine. Hmm. I wrote to Meyer. And initially, a uh, guy that's close to Billy said, well, do whatever you want. You know, we don't care. And then I got an email. I think it was two days later. And the guy said, would you please wait before you enter into that project with Cal Corf? Because Billy wanted to check with the play yarn, and he did. And they told him some things that they think you should know. And I said, okay. He said, we'll have a, a draft for you on that tomorrow. The next day, I received an email. Fortunately, I have a time and date stamped. It's been published on my blog since 2009 or on my website, wherever it is. And 
it says, um, Billy, uh, Michael Horn doesn't know what's going on here. You might want to tell him. Cal Korf is a very disturbed human being who has an agenda here to lay a trap for him and thereby for you and to do as much harm as he can to all concerned. We can't tell you what to do, but we do recommend that Michael doesn't get embroiled in that. So I took the hint and I simply wrote him back and I said, listen, do whatever you want. I don't need to participate in this. It's your gig, whatever you want to say. He tried for a couple of days to convince me. He finally gave up. And the next day there were literally, we counted them, 300 attacks on this website that was formerly singing my praises, 300 attacks against Meyer and me, including death threats. I succeeded in getting two uh, foreign-based websites to take down that and the subsequent website where he tried to put it up again. And with pe one guy wrote to me and said, we, we are you know just beside ourselves about this guy mm -hmm. because we had – just lost a, a very valued person in our country, company who did certain technology, and we got an email from Cal Korf asking to take his job with, you know, a, a non-condolence thing. Hey, I want to do that. I mean, he, everybody that ever comes in contact with this guy goes, Jesus, this guy's just off his rocker. So Cal Korf made the mistake of attacking the Meyer case and leaving a, a trail and witnesses around. And I got interviewed even by the guy uh, who had, his, mm, I, I, I'm trying to remember his, his name. He, there's a memory moment here, but it's a really nice guy who interviewed me twice in video for a, a channel up in Northern California where we spoke about all this. And he's a straight, straight ahead guy. And he, he said, you know, I just feel so bad I ever participated in this thing. And I said, well, you know, we all make mistakes, but um, it's, it's real. The, the real story is very different than the skeptics any of them have ever dared to say. And as a matter of fact, we're putting out a blog. It might, it might go out tonight or tomorrow with a real revelation about the people who've been attacking the most controversial of Billy's photos, which are called the WC UFO photos or the wedding cake UFO photos. And I'm going to, in this blog, it's ready to go pretty much. We have the real hoax that's been perpetrated and it wasn't by Billy Meyer. So, you know, we do what we do. Those of us who are, who know, you know, I, I've had seven, eight UFO studies, three from the, the ET craft, one of which was within 20 feet of it when I lived in the mountains of Brazil. There's 120 other eyewitnesses, five other photographers. I was interrogated for three months by a guy who didn't identify himself initially, turned out to be a top level United States Air Force OSI and Department of Defense supervisor who re was retired, but who came across, upon the Meyer case, thought it was a hoax, and he was going to debunk it all. And then a total of eight months after that, he came out, called me back and said, I've investigated everything. I've looked up everybody. Your Billy Meyer case is 100 percent authentic and I will take on any skeptics on your behalf. And he did. And in the UFO world, he took on a guy named Kevin Randall, who thinks he's a UFO expert uh, and a guy in India who I won't name. But all, he's, then this guy, Joe Tis, calls me back. and He says, look, I'm sorry, but. I even have an email from him. He says, no more of these people. They don't know what they're talking about. None of them can answer the questions of where Billy Meyer in 1964 in India shows up and gets interviewed by a highly reputable reporter at a credible, you know, very long lived newspaper. And he's got an album with 80 UFO photos in it, 12 of which you still have. There's no UFOs are us in India that I know about. So he says, if any skeptic wants to credibly explain that stuff, that's fine. But otherwise, these people are just full of it. This is I understand that, yes. And one of the other things that skeptics point out is some of uh, Meyer's claims mm -hmm. in terms of meeting um, like uh, – I, I think it was – what was it exactly? Now, now I'm having one of those uh, moments – uh, historical figures, yes. they claim. Yes. I cannot prove it. Well, that's the kind of thing we're always saying. This is why I like to say. And time travel, by the way. Time travel, absolutely. Prove it in 15 minutes. Piece of cake. And honest to gosh, I, 
I've thought of doing a book on that. But what about the historical figures? I well, uh, there are some people that he did uh, have uh, some kind of historical record of meeting, like Gandhi, uh, Indira Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. He met Tito Franco. He met uh, Saddam Hussein. These were people he had photographs and all. But some of the people where it goes way back. By the way, he did claim that he spent time uh, along with his first teacher. Uh, speaking with, um, well, what's his name? Tesla. And there were other people uh, and who go way back in history. Yes, Buddha and all that. Now, of course, I know how that sounds. So I say to people, according to the information in the case, I only say that when I'm referring to information that I cannot, I have no way of proving. He details lots of stuff and it's up to people. But here's the beauty of the time travel claims. I can prove time travel for Meyer and these people just with the material that we have, that we have verifiable, copyright verified publication dates for information, 100% accurate, detailed, that could not have been known. Right. Sorry, it's there's no other explanation. I've, yes, I'm, I, I'm only asking this in reference to some of the uh, claims of a lot of these skeptics out there would be uh, wanting me to address to you since i know they're sure, out sure. there they're going to be showing up the comments they're going to be saying why didn't the host ask uh, this this and this uh, sure. or, how long have they known each other this is all a ploy <laughs> well okay i found the first book of the meyer case in 1979 I met a guy in Arizona in 86 who gave me the first 1,800 pages of the English language transcripts, the uh, translated transcripts of Meyer's conversations from 75 to 78. In 1986, uh, that was in S Sedona. In 1988, I opened up a newspaper and saw where there was a new discovery by Lawrence Livermore Labs about the ozone damage tied into atomic testing. I reached under the bed. I already had that information that I had received two years prior, and it was published by Meyer between 75 and 78. And that's just the beginning of the whole thing. Now I'm reading information from a prestigious laboratory, and I already have that information right down to percentages of damage to the ozone. Then two years after that, there's another report about earthquakes and oil interacting and information for, uh, that Meyer was given about the, the connection between drilling of, you know, for oil, gas, and mining of ores, etc. That information was from 76. It preceded this so-called new discovery by uh, actually, let's see, 14 years. Ironclad, ironclad, copyright verified. I didn't meet Meyer until the year 2000. In 2004, I asked him if I could represent him officially for free in the world, meaning I don't pay you, you don't pay me, I don't run around trying to sell stuff, I'd love to, I can certainly, once we have photo, you know, photo books, any kind of books, films, DVDs, things that we and other people produced at our own expense, we're allowed to sell it, but I didn't have any of that stuff until after, what, 2002, 2004, somewhere, and nobody's forced to buy anything, so I do my work voluntarily, unless somebody says, hey, I will pay you to come here and do this. I say, great, thank you. You know, I could use the money. So I've known Billy over a period of 23 years. I tried to trick him about information that he spoke to me, told me personally. I tried to trick him four times in two or three years. Every time the answer was immediately the same, no fudging, nothing. And uh I've never known him to lie, ever, ever. I can't. There's no lies in the material. People can disagree. They can say, well, he couldn't have done that or he couldn't have met that person. Or he, that's fine. There's things we, I can't prove. But I can, if I can prove to a rational person, even starting at around 12 to 15 years old, that these people are time travelers, Meyer included, uh, don't you think you want to get with the program and either challenge me to do that, folks? debunk it, you know, involve me because I'm very happy to be as sweet and cordial as I am with my friend, Michael Deacon, with anybody, any skeptic. And I've had only a couple exceptions to that. One was when I had just had dental work and the, what do you call it? The anesthesia wore off and I really lost it with somebody. 
Other than that, it's all fact-based stuff. You either have evidence, you either can substantiate your claims, and I know none of them can, and that's why none of them are going to call me and take me up on this. If you can get any of these people to, who really think this is a hoax, not just that they feel like they're financially disadvantaged because they're they're promoting some garbage, if and even if those are the people who want to try and come at this, I will do it. We'll set it up. We'll, we'll make a nice live presentation. And that is what the critics do say. This is all for profit and <laughs> self-promotion. That's yeah. what the critics uh, attack the Meyer contact uh, case. And well, that's a, another thing I always think in my head. How much money do you think he's actually making? Meyer Probably is, nothing. Uh, well, here's the deal. And this is easily checked out. I've seen the records. Anybody can find this out. Billy Meyer has a group of people the varying numbers between 30-something and 40-something, it depends on how many people are in the group. They are a non-profit publishing group operating under strict Swiss non-profit laws. Listen, the Swiss military to this day tries to eavesdrop on his conversations with the extraterrestrials. They harass him. They have the Swiss military... Uh, with their CIA-backed, uh, you know, intelligence services, fly incursions into over Meyer's property. Eyewitnesses to this. This is going on to this day. He has survived 25 attempts in his life. Two friends of mine were sitting with him, I, I think it's six months ago, whatever, when some idiot with a rifle tried to kill him again, just missed. See, these people in ufology, they have no background. No education in investigation, in research, in logic, in thinking. They all are bored wannabes who do something else in life unless they're lucky enough to flim flam people with BS U UFO stuff and, and, and put out goofy books or whatever. None of these people have actual investigative experience. And any, let's say a Stephen Greer, well, he has a they will not comment because they know the Meyer case is singularly authentic and they are mainly interested in making a buck. And I've said it over and over. I would say it to Stephen Greer's smiling face or anybody else that's, I mean, in that bag where that's just so obvious. You know, I tried getting Kevin Brando on here and he wanted no part of you. <laughs> of course, because debunked him he was de joe tisk he wanted to talk to joe tisk joe tisk who's that that's the usaf osi department of defense guy who had a conversation with with kevin randall and dismantled uh, kevin I randall see. i think was the guy who said to joe tisk well maybe billy meyer was traveling around india in 1964 with a photo enlarger a photo enlarger I, I, okay I, yeah he says this and then uh you know joe's going oh my god i'm talking to a moron and he says well uh, a photo enlarger. Well, where do you get the original 80 photos? Well, Kevin Randall, they can't explain this. It's reported there. The the, the reporter describes an, a, a, a um, you know, a, a folder or a, an album, let's say, 80 UFO photos, and he describes them. He's describing the photos we still have. And Kevin Randall makes up nonsense. Of course, he doesn't want any part of me because these people are cowards. They're chickens. They're just profiteers and name callers. I, look, I sound like a name caller because I'm describing the way I feel about people who don't have the balls to get up and take it on because it's not about me being right. It's about this material is either legit, which makes it singularly authentic and historically unprecedented and therefore earth changing. Wasn't, wasn't Billy Meyer in India in the 60s? Correct. Yes. He was in India. He's traveled through 42 countries. He's, uh, he's been all over the place. He, he, he's, he's done it recently. <laughs> in February of this year, uh, he was picked up by one of the ETs, and he was taken to Washington in the evening, and he took a photo at the U.S. Capitol. Imagine being in U.S. airspace. And when he clicked it, because they knew what was going to be there, he captured an image of one of the craft from one of the races underground we put it up for i mean where is this I, photograph 
It's on my blog. I'll, let me see if I, I'll tell you what the name of the blog is, actually. So Yeah, I'm sure the listeners would love to see that. Sure. It's at theflyblog.com, and I'm going to give you the name of it. It's, bring it up. There, we have so many. We've got about 2,000 articles here pleading with people to wake up. Well, just to turn the tables here, now that I sort sure. of got just the basic things that some of the skeptics say. Sure. Let me just flip it around and say there was a, a person that was vouching for the Meyer contact case. And one, I think his, I believe his name was like Wally Gentleman, I believe. Yes. Yes, an expert in special effects. And he reviewed the Meyer case and yeah. he concluded that Meyer could not have faked them alone. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he was the actual, he did the special effects for Kubrick's 2001. And then more really? recently, because he passed away some years ago, in 2006, I went to meet the guys who did the Academy Award winning special effects for Independence Day. Their company is called Uncharted Territory. I showed them. One of the films that the poor skeptics all, always fall apart about, right. which is when the, the pendulum UFO, when it is circling a tree, and they said, no, uh, if we could, we could duplicate it, but we'd have to use CG because otherwise the thing has got to be on a crane and blah, blah. Basically, like what Wally Gentleman said. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the name of our blog is Meyer Was Right Again. Oops, that's, I'm sorry, that's one above it. New Billy Meyer UFO photo taken in America. And it's right there. Nobody's explained it yet. New Billy Meyer UFO photo taken in America. Speaking of taken in America, I'm about to be taken into dinner here. Yes, America. I know we have to end this quite soon here. But furthermore, as we wrap it up here, you said that Wally Gentleman was responsible for the special effects used in the Stanley Kubrick uh, film. Yes. Space Odyssey. Yeah, 2001. That's right. If you look him up, he got a little shortchanged on the way they credited him, but he was the guy. But he was responsible, and, in other words. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the guy, and he was very well respected. Back in the day, a lot of these people who worked in Hollywood were just good professionals. They didn't have an axe to grind. They weren't trying to, you know, uh, make big names for themselves. They're just trying to help. Yeah. And just to, to say it, um, anybody, any profession, any any credible person, and you don't have to be a so-called UFO investigator, blah, blah, blah. But right. if, if you really <laughs> think you can, you want to take on this case in a credible way, we would set the ground world rules and you will have your opportunity to make your case. But I really suggest you read uh, the information. I have a blog called The Singularly Authentic Billy Meyer Contacts. It'd be a good idea to read that because the experts who've gone through all this evidence have gone through it very well and very thoroughly, and they, it cannot be debunked. Sorry. So we just want to do the best thing we can. And I will certainly debate very cordially with Michael Shermer or anybody even though so far the people have shown themselves to be, uh, you know, kind of cowardly and ballless. But if they step up, hey, it's a new day. It's a, it's new, a new game. Day. I don't hold grudges. Let's go for it. Right on. And did we land in 69? No. And uh, that's another thing. That's uh, another Meyer, thing. Meyer in 1958, 11 years before that moon yeah. landing, explained there would be five I think he said five or six uh, moon landings. The first one would be a hoax. He explained in 2013 with the, the play Aaron how it was done. And he also explained how the artifacts from, from the Apollo actually were brought there by Apollo 13. And that it, it was, a, a, they, it's all a hu very huge scam. And uh, I think we just published a blog about this where, a film that the play Aaron authenticated, they said this is a legitimate film. It was a sh very short 30 second clip where the faking of the descending the ladder is shown. And of course, everybody's, you know, from the intelligence worlds and all that. Oh, it's right. just a hoax. No, no that's, that was actually one, one of the, you know, b <clears throat> botched films of that. Anyway, they were very clear about it. No, the first film landing did not happen. And Again, that's according to the information in the case. I can tell you that certain things are ironclad because I rely on things like copyrights, expert analyses, my own reasoning, and the ability 
to defend claims against this because there is no credible opposition. So any of these people in ufology, if you can get them to show up, we'll sit, you know, let's get ready to rumble. You're more than game. Oh, yes. Understood. Understood. Well, we have thrown that out there and we'll see what happens here. Maybe somebody <laughs> will bide. Anywho, though, uh, once again, thank you so much, Mr. Horn. <laughs> there we go. Michael, thank you so much for being a part of the program. We will see you again on the other side, my friend. You betcha, Michael. Thank you. Good night. And there he goes, boys and girls. That was the media representative of one Billy Meyer. I've been talking about the Billy Meyer contact case for a long, long time. And Mr. Horn has always been a part of the program since the beginning. So much respect to him. And to all of you out there listening, international listeners out there, guten morgen. And of course, those of you here in America, much respect to you too. If you have not subscribed to the program yet, please do so. We would love that. If not, that's fine too. And yes, those of you in the chat room right now, I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. And I will see you again on the other side. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place and life itself is a mystery. Until next time. Good night.